Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video, we are going to be discussing some background information regarding the force method, also known as the redundant method, for analyzing statically indeterminate beams. Now, it turns out we can use this method for other systems as well. You could use this method if you want to analyze a statically indeterminate axially loaded bar or a statically indeterminate torque loaded shaft or a statically indeterminate frame, but we're going to be looking at this um, with particular attention to beams in this video. So let's get started. So this method was first developed by James Maxwell and then later further developed by Otto Moore and Mueller Breslau. And basically how it works is when you have a statically indeterminate beam, you choose an external reaction to be what's called the redundant and then we remove its effect on the system, okay? Um, once we do that, we're going to create a new diagram that we're going to call the primary system. And the redundant that we're going to choose uh, is going to be chosen such that the primary system is going to be both statically determinant and stable. Now, I worded this these couple of sentences uh, with the assumption that we're dealing with something, a, a beam that is statically indeterminate to the first degree. So that's how we're going to uh, approach this introduction to this topic is a statically indeterminate beam that's statically indeterminate to the first degree. So let's start with an illustration. Let's consider the propped cantilever beam. So a propped cantilever beam is a cantilever beam that is fixed on one side and it's propped up by a roller on the opposite side. And we'll give these some labels here. And then let's say that this beam is supporting some real loads here. And we don't really care what the real loads are right now. We can call that W, for example. So we're going to, um, again, we're going to call this our real beam. Now... We should be able to tell that this is statically indeterminate to the first degree because I can um, just lightly here superimpose an AY, an AX, and an MA here. And then, of course, I have a BY reaction at the roller B. So we can clearly see that we have four external reactions, but we only have three applicable equilibrium equations for this beam. So it is statically indeterminate to the first degree. So what do we do? Well, we're going to set up a compatibility relationship and we're going to do that by performing this thing called the force method or also called the redundant method. So let's start by drawing this primary system that we talked about here. So we're going to choose one of these four reactions such that we can draw this thing called the primary system and the primary system will be statically determinate and stable. So I'm going to say let's Let's choose BY as the, what we call, redundant. Okay, and again, the reason why we call it, we use the word redundant, is because um, you really only need three external support reactions for a system to be stable. So if you have more than that, then the, the additional external reactions that you have are redundant. They are in addition to what you need to satisfy stability and equilibrium, okay? So that's where the term redundant is, is coming from. So if we choose BY to be redundant, the, the redundant, what we're gonna do is we're going to remove its effect. And we said that in the sentence here, we're gonna remove its effect on the system and we're gonna draw this new system that has the redundance effect removed and that's gonna be called the primary system. So if we remove the effect of the redundant, that means that I'm going to completely remove the roller from point B. So what's that, what's that gonna leave me with? Well, it's gonna leave me with a cantilever beam and I'm gonna keep the real loads all there on this on this redrawn system. So this is called the primary system. We could call it a primary beam if you want to because it is a beam, okay? And we notice that we have removed, completely removed the thing that we called the redundant, which was BY, okay? Now, when we remove um, this, this BY, this redundant, we will then see that this primary system will be allowed to deform or deflect, okay? 
So because BY is not at this uh, right end to hold up the end of that member, point B is going to deflect downwards due to the applied loading I showed here by an amount equal to delta sub B, okay, delta sub B. Now, that's our primary system. In reality, BY is still there. Remember, in, in reality, in the real beam, BY exists, okay? So we're next going to draw a, a second um, type of diagram called the redundant structure, okay? So I'm going to put a note here. I'm going to say now let's draw what's called the redundant system, you could also call it redundant structure or redundant beam. And the redundant system is going to have just BY acting on it. So we're going to say now draw the redundant system, which has BY acting on it like an applied load. And on the redundant system, we will remove all real applied loads. So what do you think the redundant system is going to look like? Well, the redundant system is going to have the fixed connection at point A, like the primary system and like the real system. And we have a span here. Let me draw that a little bit better for us. We're going to have a span here. And we are going to not include the real loads. So notice I'm, I'm not including here that W load. I am, in fact, going to place BY here. And I am going to treat BY like an applied load. And when I do that, this uh, cantilever beam that's called the redundant system is going to deflect upwards like this. And we're going to say that it deflects upwards by an amount equal to delta prime BB. Okay. And again, let's make sure we're labeling things right. This is called our redundant system. All right. So now what do we have here? We have, we have the original real beam um, that was given to us. That was the propped cantilever beam. It was statically indeterminate to the first degree. We removed, we chose BY as a redundant and we removed its effect. And we drew this new system called the primary system that continued to have the real applied loads on it. We allow the primary system to deflect. And we look at the deflection at point B specifically where we have removed the redundant and we can calculate this um, deflection at point B called delta B. Then we draw another system called the redundant system, which has the redundant that we chose acting on it as if it were an applied load, but we have removed all of the real loads. So when this BY acts on the redundant system, it's allowed to deform and it's going to deform by an amount that we're going to call delta prime BB. Okay. Now this double subscript, what that refers to is the first B um, refers to the point where the deflection is specified, i.e. point B. And then the second subscript, which in this case, the second B refers to the point where the unknown reaction is acting and i.e. that's that's BY. Okay. So how do we build a compatibility uh, relationship with this? Well, we're going to use the idea of superposition and we're going to say by superposition, the compatibility equation is, what do you think it is? Well, we'll go ahead and uh, specify a direction. We'll call deflections upward positive, And we're going to say that that's going to be negative delta B plus delta prime BB equals zero. So what we're saying is we're superimposing these two deflection diagrams, the deflection diagram from the primary system and the deflection diagram from the redundant system. And we're saying that the deflection at B in the primary system 
plus or superimposed with the deflection at B in the redundant system should equal zero. Why? Because the real beam has a zero deflection at point B. In reality, there's a roller at B, so those two deflections should combine to be zero, and we need to have a sign convention corresponding with that. So then my last question in this video is, how do we calculate delta B and delta prime BB? Well, let's write this down. We compute delta B and delta prime BB using deflection methods. Okay, now what do we mean by deflection methods? Well, these are deflection methods that you already should be familiar with. That's things like the double integration method, or if you have some pre-derived formulas uh, ready to use, you can just use the pre-derived formulas to calculate these two deflections. So what's interesting here is really when you're doing this redundant method for a beam that's statically indeterminate to the first degree, well, all you're really doing is two deflection calculations and then you're kind of combining them together in a strategic way by forming this thing called the compatibility equation. So that's the background of the force method and in a couple of videos after this we're going to do some examples illustrating this with with actual numbers. So that concludes this video. If you found this helpful please hit like and subscribe.